Episode 10, A Gathering of Storms. Warning, this chapter contains a bunch of stuff. It smelled of dampness and trash. I wrinkled my nose, waiting for them to let us through. I felt tired. The panic that seized me an hour ago sapped the last of my strength. I was overcome with fear when I found out that our team leader had been brutally murdered. We went straight to the crime scene. Killian warned me that we were headed to the Calcutta slum, so I needed to change. Modest suit. Beautiful outfit. Comfortable clothes. Um, so I'm just curious about something. Yes, I look like I'm coming in from the marching band. I'm just gonna go with comfortable. My fear was now replaced by anxiety and fatigue. Deep down I knew that Amir would not be the last victim. But for a team leader to become one, I think... It was payback for his temper terrible temper. No one deserves a death like this. We don't know how he died yet. He should have taken me more seriously. Mm, I mean, no one deserves a death like that unless you're... Do the R or the you're a P. Anyway. Rose may not have been the kindest person in the world, but even he didn't deserve such a fate. It was too cruel. You feel sorry for Mr. Rose. I pulled myself together. We still had to see his body. All sorted. They're letting us through. Miss Khan, Miss Berg, if you feel sick, let me know right away. It's not the prettiest sight. Captain Lightwood, I appreciate you trying to protect us, but the worst has already happened. My colleagues looked upset and confused. They felt sorry for Mr. Rose, but at the same time, they were scared. After all, one of us had been killed. This meant that the person behind the ritual sacrifices got very close to us. Captain Lightwood, have you seen him yet? Yes. I wanted to make sure that it was really Emmett Rose. Wasn't he decapitated? How did you know it was him? We headed to the alley where the crime happened. Killian Grimm has ever replied. I've known Emmett for a long time. He has a notable scar on his uh, chest. And you will remember that the corpses were left naked. On top of everything else, he never came back to the hotel last night. I see. Anyway, the local expert must have checked his fingerprints by now. I took a deep breath before entering the alley. The first person I saw was Ratan Vaish. He was standing next to the crime scene waiting for us, his face smooth, calm, and devoid of any emotion. When he saw me, he relaxed a little and his gaze warmed up. Miss Cohn, Miss Berg, Captain Lightwood, you're here. He stepped aside, revealing the whole scene to us. The naked and decapitated corpse was leaning against the wall, just like the previous ones. The corpse's gray skin was smeared with mud and sprinkled with blood. There was a noticeable scar across his chest, just as Killian had mentioned. Keep calm and get to work. I pressed my lips together, trying not to focus on the disgusting smell, and gathered my thoughts. I wasn't going to let anything interfere with our work. Well, let's uh, take a look at him. I kept my expression calm, trying to keep my disgust at bay. Are you sure you're fine? Yes. Meanwhile, Lima was examining the body. Everything is exactly the same as the previous case. The blood-painted symbol, decapitation, naked, mutilated body. I don't understand. Are there uh, are the victims tortured? Why are they all beaten up? They're sacrificed, but this does normally include severe beatings. The killer is a mentally ill person. We can't guess their interpretation of religion. Probably he somehow justifies his desire to hurt the victims to torture them. Maybe he thinks that, I don't know, the goddess Kali wants this. But that's nonsense. Sacrifice doesn't require suffering, blood, death, yes, but not pain. That's why I'm telling you not to rely on the killer's common sense. He's sick. Most likely the uh, Kala Shaktism that he follows is completely different from the real thing. More violent, avid for massacre, pain, and with no ethics behind it. I think you're right. In that case, our killer is just a monster, justifying his cruelty with faith. Killian rubbed the bridge of his nose. It was clear that today was not an easy day for him. Let's get this inspection done as quickly as we can. 
He has known Rose for longer than we have. They may have been friendly. Support him. I can see how hard this is for you, and I'm very sorry for your loss. I'm sorry things turned out this way. Killian nodded curly, not meaning my eyes. Thank you. That is a step in the towards strengthening your friendship. Squatting down in front of the corpse, Killian began examining it. Lima started to reason out loud. The killer left the body in the Calcutta slums. I don't think he wanted to attract attention like the previous time. The merchant's body was dumped in a crowded place near our embassy. But Rose, who's directly connected with the embassy, was much left much further away. It sounds like it was done on purpose. Yes, I am sure of that. Take a look at this. We all came up to Killian, who was uh, pointing at the corpse's open palm. I looked at Rose's dirty, half-clenched fingers, which seemed frozen in the agony of death. There was a symbol burned into his skin. I noticed a strange symbol. Take a look. What does it do if I do this? Eh. That's some kind of symbol. Hmm. I may be wrong, but it's a... Uh, Brahmi script. Could you elaborate a little more? It's an ancient Indian writing system used before our time. So the killer left us a message. I'm not sure what the meaning of the symbol is, but why did he mark only the fourth corpse? I felt a strange urge to touch Mr. Rose's cold hand. Hmm... Overcome your revulsion and do it. When my fingers grazed his gray skin, a shiver ran through my body. My colleagues looked at me surprised. At first, I thought I was just disgusted, but then everything became blurry, although I was still sitting straight. This feeling has become way too familiar by now. Another vision flashed before my eyes. The air was humid, heavy, but cooler than during the day. He was alone in the alley until he heard the faint footsteps behind him. I met Rose, had only enough time to turn around. Several pairs of hands grabbed hold of him, and someone covered his mouth. Fingers squeezed his neck so hard that everything went dark, he fought back, but there was no chance to escape. Sinner. Sinner. Your very existence is a catalyst for heresy. Those were the last words he heard before sinking into the darkness. My eyes opened wide. I was sitting in the same position, in the same place. My colleagues were still looking at me, bewildered. Amala. I shook my head, trying to come to my senses. It felt like I had spaced out for at least a few minutes. But in fact, only a few seconds had passed. I'm fine. I was just thinking. It's getting harder and harder to come up with excuses, and I don't think I should share everything with my colleagues just yet. What did they mean, a sinner hearsay? Right now, we have a lot of things to think about. What should we do next? The guide appeared next to us and spoke up. All we can do now is wait, Miss Berg. But we'd better leave the slums. I agree. We'll read the forensic and criminological reports when they're ready. I suggest we get back to the embassy and discuss everything. And so we did. It was a cool and quiet in the hall. Mr. Rose's usual seat was empty. I felt uneasy to see his unoccupied chair, knowing that he would never be there again. Lima, Raton, and Killian sat down. I don't know what will become of our task force now. Do you think they'll disband us, send us home? Killian stood up with a brief shrug. He started pacing back and forth. I don't know. Our leader has been killed, and we are all in clearly in danger. Maybe someone really doesn't want us to be here. So we'll just leave things like that? I've already contacted HQ and reported the latest news. They will let us know their instructions. Voice your thoughts directly. Carefully draw your conclusion. Clearly state that the diplomat was killed. Carefully draw your conclusion. Our job was to find the diplomat, but maybe there's no one left to find. 
We all guessed this a long time ago, right? Like Mr. Rose, Hayes came here on a diplomatic mission, and uh, even stayed at the same hotel. I pursed my lips and shook my head. I think he suffered the same fate as Emmett Rose. I've already told you, we can't leave until we know for sure. Even if all that left are his remains, we need to see them. Every victim had some kind of tr troubled past, some kind of secret. It's a pattern. But what was Mr. Rose's secret? I looked at Killy and he averted his, my gaze. He's keeping silent even if he knew our team leader well. Is he hiding something? Rutan Vaish joined the conversation. I think you'll need to appoint a new team leader. Who should I report to? Yes, you're right. We have to make a, this decision now. Everyone looked at each other. Shouldn't London be making this decision? It's such an important position. Under normal circumstances, yes. They might even send someone to replace Rose. But we need to decide who will lead the investigation in the meantime. And that's for us to decide, not for the higher-ups. We need someone who's really interested in solving this mystery, not someone just waiting to get it over and done with. Killian used to say that he wanted to be done with this Calcutta case as soon as possible. How things change. It's because someone he knows died. I think we have two options, Amala or me. What? Me? Do you think I'd be suited for this role? Certainly. You're smart, determined. You can be tough at times, uh, or the right times, but you know how to get your point across. We've seen you in action. You're good. Lima, what do you think? She smiled. I would be equally comfortable working under either of you. I respect you both. I can become the head of the task force. How is this even possible? I'm very excited. Should I put myself forward? Mm, this one's a tough one, but by all means. I would like to put myself forward for this job. Yeah, Killian and his It Might Be Us too. Huh. That's what you get for being indecisive. I know I'm inexperienced and many things are new to me, but I'm ready to try my best and work hard to solve this case. I have an inquisitive mind. I'm resourceful. I'm interested in us getting good results. And I also respect my colleagues and listen to them. I don't mind if you're in charge, Killian, but I would also like to express my interest in the position. Killian thought about it for a while, Lemo silent, waiting for the final decision. I like you, Amola, and I believe that you would do well. I would be glad to report to you. I never wanted to lead anyone. All I care about is doing my job well. I have been off in order to lead various teams in the past, but this time I'm free to choose. At least until London gets back to me. And I'm choosing you, Amala. I know you will do well. So, from now on... You're our team leader. I can't believe this is happening. No worries, I'm going to help you. It's always easier to work with someone else and also feel more at ease. Good. Raton smiled, looking at me. So, it's decided? Yes, we've got that sorted on. I will discuss everything with London myself. In that case, can we finish here? The only thing left to do is wait for the lab results. Lima hesitated, looking at all of us. With a trace of awkwardness in her voice, she asked, Everyone, how about we go back to the hotel together, just sit in a room and think about everything? I don't really want to be alone right now. Spending time together? I agree and invite Rattan. Yeah, I'll be glad to keep you uh, company and I'm scared and sad because of what happened. Mr. Vaish, will you join us? It wouldn't hurt for us to get to know him better. Thank you for the invitation, Amola. I'll be glad to. Together, the four of us went to the hotel. He is glad you invited him. After a short while, we settled in Lima's room. She stretched and tiredly massaged her neck. It's so good to be in a cool, fresh room again. Killian collapsed on the sofa, stretching out his legs. He looked lost in thought today. Raton was looking out of the window, his hands clasped behind him. 
Not to seem rude, guys, but I'd like a drink. I actually really need one right now. Liam and I exchange glances. I need one too. Scotch? Good choice. Yes, please. Let's honor the memory of our team leader. This is all very hard. Fine. I'll grab the bottle of scotch. Lima got down to business. I sat down on the couch next to Killian. Raton sank into the chair. Killian sighed. I can't believe this happened. He was mutilated, humiliated. It's terrifying. This is some insane level of inhumane cruelty. I don't think they will let us go home. We have unfinished business here. Then let's try and be friends from now on. Not just colleagues. I thought we were already trying that. It'll be easier for us to work together that way. No one objected. We had a grueling job ahead of us, and it would have been inconvenient to keep up any formalities. Lima brought out the scotch. Everyone who decided to drink poured themselves a glass and got comfortable. Yet there was no hint of happiness or camaraderie in the gesture. The air in the room was heavy, filled with anxiety. I took a few sips. It warmed my throat and left a mellow aftertaste on my tongue. I wish I could do something to lighten the mood, at least for a little while. The situation here in Calcutta is getting worse and worse. Killian didn't say anything when Lima suggested that Mr. Rose might have also been hiding a deep, uh, dark secret. Would it be appropriate to ask him about it now? Be subtle. Everything's so confusing, and one thought keeps bothering me. What's that? Asha Chatterjee murdered her child. The boy from uh, Varanashi was terminally ill. Amir was a greedy liar. What kind of secret could have been in Rose's past? If all of this follows a deliberate pattern, then he must have had this uh, skeletons in his closet. Killian took a sip of scotch, staring at the floor. Killian, did you know him better than we did? The attaché leaned back on the sofa. It was obvious that he wasn't keen on talking about it. Yes. I knew him very well, but I'm not sure if we should bring up the past, but it might help us complete the picture. I'm worried your opinion of me might change if I tell you. Emmett and I bonded during disgraceful times. We have to convince him to speak, it's important for our investigation. <laughs> I'm too shy. Too. But it's important in the investigation, don't you understand? Lima, tell him. She spoke up for me. Amala is right, Killian. We need any information on this case. Rose has been murdered, three people before him were all torn to pieces. Isn't that enough? Killian shook his head. I understand, and I'll tell you, it's just a very unpleasant memory. Killian down the rest of his drink in one gulp. Apparently, gathering his thoughts, he was silent for a few moments, then asked, Do you want to know every little disgusting detail, or should I just give you a summary? It's crucial to find out all the details, but it's clearly unpleasant for him to remember. I'm very sorry, I know it's painful for you to recall those events, but every detail could be a clue. It's fine, Amala, thank you for your concern. It was seven years ago, in 1973, in Derry. Ireland? Yes. Went there for work, and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I'm sure you'll remember what happened on Bloody Sunday in Bogside, those peaceful protesters who got shot by British soldiers. Fourteen people died. At the time, the conflict in Northern Ireland was at its peak, and I closely was involved in it. I was only 23, a young guy with no good head on his shoulders. I had no job, no contact with my family, and I was in a good physical condition, and I had some shady connections. I was placed in a small squad that acted in the interest of narrow circle of people. Wealthy people, they influenced the situation in Ireland from the shadows exclusively from their own benefits. Well, I was their mercenary. There were many secret groups like mine at the time. The target will arrive in 40 minutes. That's enough time to quietly get rid of him. I'd like to hear him scream. It's a pity we can't show our uh, faces. Once we're done here, we can rest for two weeks. I can't wait to take a break from these missions. 
Emmett was leading one of the squads, just like me. We quickly found common ground. We were both ambitious, crazy, arrogant, young. Both our opponents also didn't sit idly by. One by one, our squads were wiped out. We were in a difficult spot. There was a big fuss about the conflict in Northern Ireland. Emmett began to contact me less and less often. Eventually, he disappeared altogether. But one day... Killian, it won't end well for you. You need to leave this squad. Where the f can I go? I have nowhere to go. They'll track me down. How did you get rid of them? I'm under the protection of the British government. I work for them now. They will help. You're talented and will be useful to them. Go to hell. To hell with them. Pretty much one and the same. They won't be able to help me. They'll find me wherever I am. Didn't you see those who tried to run away? I don't want my head to be brought here in a bag and thrown at those feet. But I'm here, in front of you, alive and with my head still attached to my body. I was desperate. I was sick of doing dirty work, getting blood on my hands on behalf of other people. No amount of money could help me deal with my self-loathing, but I couldn't just leave. I would have been tracked down and killed on the spot, yet Rose was standing in front of me safe and sound, in one piece. The man and man had managed to quit the mercenaries and get on the other side. He gave me hope that I would make it, promised that my personal file would be classified because otherwise I was screwed. If you learn Killian's story in detail, this will be useful in the future. It fallen in so deep that it would have been hard for anyone to get as low as I was, even if one tried. But in the end, they really helped me, pulled me out of that ditch. They cleaned up after me, found a place to apply my skills, and gave me a job. That's how my career started. I owe a lot to Rose and the British government. That's why work comes first for me. You and Rose were mercenaries? Is this his dark secret? The fact that he was a man without principles who did despicable work for money? Yes. And he was able to pull himself out of the mud into a normal life like a bloody modern-day Munchausen. I didn't know how Killian found the courage to share his secret with us, was it? Because he was scared after Rosa's death, or did the scotch loosen his tongue? But I was impressed. Probably both. Thank you for sharing this with us. I can't imagine what you had to go through. And I understand how much his death must have shaken you up. He smiled, sadly. Thank you. If this is the reason why Rose was killed, then a question arises. He was under the protection of the government. Not many people knew about his past. Who has access to classified information? The room went quiet. The scotch was quickly going to my head. My thoughts were muddled. Guys, I'm not feeling too well. It's been a terrible day. I think I'll go home. Everyone said goodbye, Lima stayed in her room, and we went out into the corridor. It was nice to spend some time with you. It was good to relax after such a difficult day. Killian said goodbye to us and returned to his room, and I also headed for the exit. As I found myself in the crowded part of the hotel, I suddenly caught a few snippets of conversation. Found the slums decapitated, can you imagine? Everyone in Calcutta is talking about it. Feeling a light touch on my shoulder, I turned around and Vaish appeared behind me. Amola, it would be better if I walked you home. No worries, I'll take a taxi. Let me walk you to the taxi, at least. I'd like to talk to you. I looked at the guide, who was usually a man of very few words. I see no reason to refuse. I let him accompany me, we walked on together. I don't want to sound obvi ob obvious, but it's in indeed getting more dangerous out here. You need to stay close to your colleagues and be vigilant. Shadows are gathering in Calcutta. Your main focus should be on not finding yourself in the epicenter of it. What are you talking about? I'm just warning you. Asking you to be on alert. 
His voice was flat, his face was motionless like a mask, his features handsome and elegant, but it was impossible to guess his true feelings and intentions hidden behind his dark eyes. He is a little strange, mysterious even. I will try to avoid being alone, thank you. That's not all I'm asking for. Please don't ignore your feelings and intuition. That will help you a lot. I don't understand. You'll understand when the time comes. There was a strange tension inside me. I looked sideways at him. How do you know that? I'm not myself after what I saw this morning. Be more specific, please. I have been watching you closely, and I can guess what's bothering you. If I were you, I wouldn't neglect the abilities bestowed upon you. You know what I mean. If you want to flee from here, do it. If you're ready to stay, then stay and accept the consequences. Kolkata quickly teaches you the world is far more complicated than you think. Damn. I'm sure he's talking about my visions. He bowed slightly, as he usually did before saying goodbye. Take care. He went to the opposite direction, pondering over his words. I walked slowly to the taxi. Finally, I was nearly home. Hungry, exhausted. I just wanted to quickly have dinner, wash up, and fall asleep. A couple of children ran past me in the street, almost knocking me down. They were chattering about something. We've already played everywhere. You're boring. You're annoying. Where else can we go? Mom said we could only play in our street. I want to go another to another street. I want to want to want. Stop yelling, Padma. I'm older, so I decide. Mom will get mad if she finds out. She's in a bad mood today. She worried about us. I approached the fence to enter the yard. We won't go to the murderous tree. Let's go to another one. Please, Raj. I froze. Even the children are talking about it. Are you stupid? They can kill you wherever they want. Do you think evil people only walk on one street? That's not true. Dad said there were evil people in Mom's village, so she moved to a good place. Shut up, Padma. Mom will cry if she hears you. I watched them. The girl crashed down and started drawing something on the ground with a stick, singing to herself. Talk to the children. Sure, why not? I got nothing to lose. I mean, I might learn something useful. Children are chattier than adults. What are you doing? Trying. Look, there are big mountains here, sir. Do you remember Dad telling us? You will grow old while climbing them. That's how high they are. And here's the sea, and if you decide to swim across, you'll drown right away. Erase it or mom will get angry. You'll only have a roti for dinner. Then I'll have to take your candies. I know where you hide them. The girl took off, running away from her brother. She was laughing, and he was running after her, screaming. I came up to the drawing to look at it. Interesting. Raj jumped up. He looked me up and down suspiciously. He erased the drawing with his foot next to her brother. Padma immediately squealed in protest. Why did you do that? He did not take his black eyes off of me, carefully holding his sister's hand. How do I talk to them? Try to get them to open up. What a pity that you erased it. It was a beautiful drawing. Did you really like it? Shut up, you idiot. Don't talk to strangers. The boy holding his sister's hand dragged her along. She turned to me one last time before she started whining. That's just boring. I will ask the gods to send you to that evil village. You're annoying. I looked down at the ground where the drawing had been. An evil village. I've reached the point where even I listen to rumors. Somewhere near the mountains, fine. I'll think about this later. You've learned important information from children. 
that will be useful in the future. Sometime later, I was sitting at the table with my hosts having dinner. They were discussing the plans for Santa's wedding, since there was uh, the main thing going on in the house. I didn't join in the, the conversation. I was just mindlessly pushing my food around my plate, lost in thought. Raton warned me about something dangerous. Santa did too, much earlier. One of us has been killed. We're at a loss as what to do next. The three of us are stuck here. The killer's literally breathing down our necks. What village were the children talking about, and what does Rattan have to do with the situation? I realized that my endless questions were weighing on me. If I didn't find any answers, all of us were going to be in danger. On top of everything else, I was tormented by those strange visions. I had a dream about Rose right before hearing the news of his murder. I bet that wasn't just a nightmare. At some point, a feeling of impending doom washed over me, and I had no idea how to escape it. I give this one a five. So two independence, four loyalty, five respect, one rage, and diamonds. All right, and thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down in the description. Plenty of links to check out there. Ways to support the channel. Ways to become uh, more integrated with the community and whatnot. Aside from that, leave a comment down below, letting me know what you thought of this and. Uh, I don't know, any and all work that I do with my voices and the whole nine yards. Um, aside from that, really looking forward to uh, continuing this. As always, I do apologize about, I guess, kind of being late. I mean, in a way, I'm already like a whole two seasons behind on this book because I discovered this app um, only after a couple people told me about it uh, very recently um, versus, you know, when it first came out. Um, so, yeah. Uh, trying to play catch up, right? And then all the other content that I've got going on right now, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really swamped, right? I'm, I'm really swamped. Tomorrow is um, a lot of work going on, right? There's choices for those of you reading or watching this beyond, uh, basically today is Thursday, the 19th of October. Let's put it that way. Um, so Friday, I'm entirely swamped. Spider-Man 2, choices. Um, I have a medical appointment in the morning for my cats, um, where they're supposed to have surgery, yada, 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 a lot's going on. Then this weekend, the Halloween events in COD, and me trying to cover Spider-Man 2, and the whole nine yards. So, there's a lot going on. Um, so I am trying to get around to doing this more often, and then also catching up on a lot of other shit. So, do keep that in mind. So, be a little patient as I try and play catch up. Thanks again for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.